Hey, what's up everyone? Game Dad here, and it is that time of the month again where we take a look at this guy right here. This is Video Games Monthly. Now, what is Video Games Monthly, you might ask? Well, I'm glad you did. This is a monthly subscription service where you either get to pick three, four, five, or ten games corresponding with that power-up pack, and you get that number of games in the box. Sometimes, if you worked out a deal with them ahead of time, you might get some pricier items in order to fill out the value and you'll get less games, or maybe they'll throw in an extra game. So, this actually feels pretty full this month. I do the four up power pack, and with that, I usually only get four games, but this box feels pretty full. So, we are going to dive right in. We're gonna open this box up, and we're gonna see what all is in here. That box is tight. We got all kinds of goodies in here. Looks like some NES right on top. So let's dive in on this first one. We have Lunar Pool. That is Lunar Pool on the NES. Let's take a look. So we are definitely starting off with not a bang on this one. Uh, Lunar Pool. This has got to be the single most incompetent billiards video game I have ever played. Not that there's a ton of them that are super amazing, but... The controls on this are not very intuitive. It's kind of weird with how to figure out how to position the cursor. Uh, I didn't even notice the shot power right away, but once I got that figured out, at least I could hit stuff a little bit harder. But it's, I don't know, it's just, it's not fun. I uh, i am unimpressed with this game, uh, to say the least. But yeah, Lunar Pool on the NES. And now next up, we have another NES game. It is... I don't know, it has a red label though. This is, oh, Legacy of the Wizard on NES. Let's go ahead and take a look at Legacy of the Wizard on NES. And next up here, we have Legacy of the Wizard. Now, I wasn't really able to figure out much of what I was supposed to do in this game. Uh, definitely adventure style platforming to it. Uh, it had vibes of, you know, like your typical Zelda, things like that. But it, to me, it really wasn't that fun. However, this has a banging soundtrack. Like the music in this game is really good and I was really impressed with that. But I mean, this must have been a super early NES title just by the look of it and its colors and stuff like that. They aren't very advanced, but I mean, it, it was okay. But the thing that really drew me in was definitely the background music. And next up we have a Super Nintendo game whose label I cannot read. Let's see, this is, I don't know what this is. Smart Ball, huh. So that is Smart Ball on the Super Nintendo. Never heard of this, let's go ahead and take a look. So next up here is Smart Ball on the Super Nintendo. And at first, it took me a few tries to kind of figure out what was going on in this game. It's definitely a platformer, but it has some unique mechanics with it as far as like this ball blob thing goes. It kind of reminds me of an early version of like the putty games, but it, it was really weird at first until I started figuring out all the different mechanics that it had and that you could use. And I mean, it's got a fun soundtrack to it. And once you start getting actually going with it and you understand what you're supposed to do, I was actually having a lot of fun with this. I only captured a couple minutes of footage of it, but I ended up playing this game for about 45 minutes because I just kept wanting to beat it. And I kept figuring out new mechanics in order to help me do that. So yeah, this is Smart Ball on the Super Nintendo. And honestly, it was a lot of fun. And I was right. This box was extra full this month because we have two more games in here. Ooh, what's that? We have, what's that? what are they called? Giblets? Gibbets? Giblets is a food thing. This is gibbets. Uh, it's a Bowser gibbet for Crocs. Well, ain't that fancy. Now, next up, another NES game. We have Swords and Serpents. So right here, as you can see, that is Swords and Serpents on the NES. Huh, let's take a look. And here is Swords and Serpents. And this is a very old school style dungeon crawler for sure. Uh, I was having a bit of trouble figuring out how to play it and like how to actually do battling in it effectively. But I mean, it's pretty cool that you can make your own customized character. It definitely has the old school feel with where you're walking through different things, but it, it was just okay. And the music, it was like they were trying to give it a really cool soundtrack, but they kept using really sharp tones and like very, very MIDI sounds instead of it sounding more like an actual music track with it. 
But, I mean, it was okay. If I were to give this more time, I might like it more. But overall, it was just there was too much stuff that I was unsure about with how to do it. So I just I wasn't really having fun with it, unfortunately. Now, before we dive into this last game, I see it down here on the bottom. This is the Video Games Monthly Social Card. Now, this card basically states, hey, make sure you update your list every month because that way they know to not send you duplicates. Sometimes mistakes can happen, but they're always good about it. They always take care of it and they always take care of their customers. At least that has been my experience. But this right here also says that if you put your experience and your unboxing on social media, you are entered in a chance to win three free games. So definitely always do that. I mean, why wouldn't you post it? And then right here, the last game we have, I've heard this one is very good. This is Bump and Jump. So that is Bump and Jump on the NES. Let's, uh, let's go take a look, shall we? And last up here, we have Bump and Jump. And this one is definitely bumping. It's got a super fun, like upbeat little soundtrack going with it. It's bright, it's colorful, it's got a super easy concept. Uh, you bump things or you jump over gaps in the road and that's it. It's you bump and you jump. And honestly, I was having a lot of fun with it. Uh, it took me a couple tries to figure out like the timing and stuff for jumping, but Overall, I mean, I was having a blast playing this, and I kept playing this after I was done recording footage. But yeah, bump and jump on the NES. Good stuff. So there you have it, everyone. That is all five games that came in this month's VGM box. Again, on the NES, we had Lunar Pool. We had Legacy of the Wizard. On SNES, we had Smart Ball. Then back to NES, we have Swords and Serpents. And finally, we had Bump and Jump, bringing the total financial value up to forty-six sixty, according to price charting as of recording this video. Uh, so that is right on with how much the box costs. So that's always awesome. Plus, I got a bunch of games that were not in my collection, and I actually hadn't heard of most of these. So awesome. I love getting new stuff, especially things I haven't heard of and haven't played before. So very happy to have these in the collection. And if y'all like today's video and you want to see another recent VGM unboxing, then check out this area right here. And as always, I'm Game Dad. I thank y'all for watching, and I'll catch you later.